Good morning. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you Morning Call. So markets ended their three-day losing streak yesterday, and many attribute it to hope of a fiscal cliff compromise. Scott, what do you attribute it to? I think there's a little bit of everything. You know, since that uh, November 16th reversal, we've been in a nice technical tape, constructive. Uh, compromise is good. And finally, you know, you saw a little bit over the weekend when I think Boehner said that he would, you know, say, okay, we could increase uh, taxes on guys a million dollars and above, which didn't happen. And then now we're seeing reports that there's a counteroffer from the president of, of 400,000 plus, and at least they're talking and they're getting closer. And besides that, the overseas indices, you have a lot of indices in Europe, like Germany and, and a few others making yearly highs. Uh, the Chinese markets had a nice rally off those lows from a few weeks back when you know, I think someone came out and said uh, it's a general, you know, it's a good spot to get involved. But anyway, you know, all in all, you, you mix it all up and it seems like the trend has been to the upside and the markets keep holding where they have to. Exactly. So what levels are you watching in the S&P right now? Well, now I think we're opening back at resistance. If we look at the chart here, you will see that you know, this was that November 16th bottom. This was that red dog reversal after about a, what, a 6 7% correction after breaking this trend that was put in from the June 4th reversal. So from there, you had a nice methodical move to the upside. If you do look, every time we paused, we held higher. This was your first pause after a, a nice move. They tried to break it down. They couldn't. Then all of a sudden got a little choppy right here, you know, but again, support came in. And then after Fed Day, there was a, a little, you know, an indication to sell some stock, take some off the table and then see what happens. And then you had a three day down move met with buying. So now here you are, 1440, I think is big resistance, you know, a, a close above 14 and 38 to 1440. And really the next spot, which I'm not sure if we get there this year, but you don't have to, is the, the September highs of 1474. So it sounds like even though the, obviously trading will be slow now around the holidays, there are, are select opportunities out there. What's your advice around this time of year? I think take those select opportunities. I feel like I've been trying to take some time off to, to close up some loose ends, but I keep getting drawn back into the market. This is like the godfather market. They keep bringing me back in because setups keep showing their face and they keep working, where a lot of them keep working. So at this point, don't be too spread out. Don't put too much risk out there, but stay involved with the market because these equities are acting a bit frisky. Well, some of the opportunity, as we mentioned, is in the banks. The banks saw some decent action yesterday. Bank of America jumping almost 4% to $11. Action's getting a little more interesting here. Yeah, at this point now, people are going to probably start chasing. For me, I'll, I'll trim some. I actually trimmed a little bit this morning. But even for, for something like Bank of America to have such a move and, and make it so tradable. Sometimes you have moves that are choppy and sometimes you have moves that are tradable. You look at the chart pattern of Bank of America, you know, it's such a pretty picture. This was, you know, the, the big channel that it was in since September. Here's when it held higher. This is when we talked about maybe being in a tier one. Here was your $10 breakout. Nice move. And what did it do? It consolidated higher. Wasn't sloppy or slippery. It was nice and tight. Then yesterday you had another buy area above 1071 to close at 11. And now we're opening up around 1125. So that's a nice methodical move, very tradable and even a, a somewhat easy hold for those on the virtual trading floor, even myself that have seen it for over the course of you know, a few weeks. And Goldman has been lagging the sector, but that also had a nice day yesterday, up 3.5% and cleared the first resistance level at 121. So where's the next level you're watching for? It's so interesting how each time during the course of a rally, leadership changes and i would say uh you know the last time the banks went goldman led which makes you know, which is a little bit more healthy you know this time around it didn't lead but it doesn't mean there's not opportunity there if you take a look at the chart here you know you look when goldman led which was right around here that happened the day before the rest of the tape you know had a nice methodical move and then recently as bank of america was going and some others it was it was nice and tight in the lower end and then finally yesterday i was here i think with lindsay and we were talking about a break above 120. Broke above 120, closed strong, probably opening up a little bit. Your next area here is about 126, 127. And I don't think that this resistance is going to be much of a problem. And Wells Fargo broke above the 200-day and 100-day with its big gain yesterday. Do you think this rally will be sustained? I think this one, it's been interesting because investors love Wells Fargo. Traders don't really look at it as much. I know for me, I don't focus on Wells Fargo, but it's nice to see that it, it traded with the group yesterday. If you look here, you know, you had a nice breakout. Um, very strong, 
wide range bar. This should lead to more price, you know, more higher prices. And at this point, maybe right down 34, it should hold above there, you know, and, and then you, know, you have a small gap to be filled into this uh, 35. And then the recent highs here are, all, are, you know, up in the 35 area. At this point, it's in the game. It's not showing the most relative strength, but also, you know, in, in, in you put it in, in uh, perspective here, this one, you know, actually uh, is, has held up well. It's not at the bottom end of the range. It, it's held up in this whole mix. So I do think uh, on, a, on a weekly or monthly basis, you know, next year it'll be interesting to see if, if Wells Fargo could clear 3660 and then you know, 40 bucks should see, you know, could be attainable. And Morgan Stanley had a nice five-day rally, but then ran into major resistance at 1855. So will it have enough power to break through this level? Well, it's always hard to buy something after five up days, but it's good to see Morgan Stanley, which has been somewhat the dog of the group, you know, the most beaten up one over the course of the past few years, you know, acting well, you know, with the group moving higher. Um, maybe it's saying something about the investment banking world out there. Who knows? At this point, though, you know, as a trade, if you look here, it was it was somewhat calculated. I avoided this one and didn't trade it. Some guys on my desk got involved the last few days. Here was your first breakout. Nice gap, moved up tight pattern. And then there's your two-day move back up into you know, some decent resistance. At this point, I don't think this is going to be much resistance. It's probably opening up above a little bit. I would take some off into this move, but, but stay with something because sometimes if you take it all off, you never get back involved. But Morgan Stanley is acting well. It's above all the moving averages. You know, I would think at some point it could into you know, 2013 see north of 20 bucks. So, you know, but entries and exits do matter to stay with the move. Now, I'm wondering how Morgan Stanley compares to JP Morgan, which has been in a steady uptrend, has been above all key moving averages. It looks like it's having trouble clearing resistance, though, at about 45.50. So does it need more time before making another level? It's trying to power through. And this one lagged. Again, Bank of America was the one that set the pace. And this one, you know, we, we know what happened earlier in the year with the London Whale, and it's repaired its chart. And uh, I remember talking about it uh, a week or so back when Bank of America broke out. I'm like, you know what? 41 and a half looks like a, a nice middle level channel to potentially get involved. If you look here at the, at the chart, you will see that was right here. You know, this line right around 41.50, this lower level tight pattern. And since then, it had a nice move. And then finally yesterday, it cleared this, uh, you know, this downtrend, closed above it. You know, it's on its way. Um, you know, you have to look to the left and to the left, you have 46. So from here to 46, you know, you do have uh, some, you know, some area to, area to maneuver. And, and I think it's in the game. I'm still long some JP Morgan. I might trim a little bit on this open, but I'm going to try and keep with some. Okay, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with tech stocks, but first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. We're back and talking tech stocks. Apple getting even more compelling. Yesterday, the stock closed at highs. Wondering if this rally could be sustainable. At this time, all you have to do is measure the action. And every time we've tried to measure the action from the, the heights of 705, it's been nothing but a trade and more of a, a sell slash short. So hopefully it changed. Hopefully for, for America and for the investors out there, yesterday was something significant. Because for a trader, it was pretty significant. I know for myself, um, I was watching 505.50 as that major pivot. You know, there was a lot of pre-market volatility, the city downgrade, but then you had the 2 million iPhones sold in China. So there was like a, a push-pull. And, you know, the bulls wound up winning yesterday. And so for me, I know I got involved and went green on my virtual trading floor for those who are involved there and see it around 505.50, maybe 506. And it stayed green all day and I'm still long coming in today. So as far as a cash flow trade, you know, 18 to 20 points is, you know, something pretty significant as far as an investment, you know, or, or being a potential bottom, it still has a lot to prove. You go to the chart here of Apple and you will see, you know, from this head and shoulders top at 700 all the way down to the first major red dog reversal that led to a nice, you know, 70, 80 point move to 594. And now here we are again, you know, and the stock just is, you know, the sediment's really negative. And, you know, all I know is that yesterday it traded below 505.58. Um, went down to 501.23. The way this strategy works is you buy it when it comes back above it and holds above it. It did close strong, so I took some, and now it's opening up about five, six points. It fills the gap here at 525, so it takes away some of this negativity from the directional gap, 
but it's going to really have a, a lot to prove. I'm going to probably trim a little bit on the open or right at, or even before the open and then try and hold some. I think the next major step for Apple is hold this gap. You know, it's up five or six points. Don't give away the gap. Don't go negative and don't start getting into yesterday's move because then people will say it was just a bounce. And then that 505 will come into play again. So if Apple could actually have like a gap and go today and close up eight to 12 points, maybe it's another step in the right direction. But right now you have to really watch the action and it's a very temperamental situation and rightly so. Well, Google also closed at highs yesterday after rallying 18 handles. The stock is now about halfway through erasing the big loss from October 18th. So can its recent strength continue? Well, this has been a better acting situation. It didn't pull in as much as Apple. And, you know, after that earnings, when it got halted, it had some work to do. Uh, we focused on this, um, I believe, about a month ago or something like that when it cleared that 675 area. I took it as a trade then. I don't have it now. You look at the chart and you'll see it's acting much better. You know, this was the reversal on November 16th. You had a quick little move, consolidated. This is when we were focusing on it, right when it broke above this, like 675. Quick move to the 50-day, paused, held higher. You know, we've been talking about how 680 would be pretty constructive to hold. And from there, you know, a nice move to close at the highs of the last few weeks. So at this point, it's negated some of the control of this potent wide range down bar. So it's in the game for higher prices. I like the way it's acting. I would just, you know, trim and trail and watch your entries and exits because some people who chased it on this day <laughs> wasn't feeling too good coming in the following day. So at this point, you know, I would stay with it. It is one of uh, the high beta leaders right now. Now, Amazon gained almost 2% yesterday, but gets rejected every time it touches that 255.50 level. So is it still on your radar for a move above it? Yes, and, th and this is a nice tight pattern. It takes time to consolidate a big move, and this one had probably one of the biggest from that November 16th low, and it didn't even, and it's not too far off the highs. So this is one of those candidates that show leadership, that could give you upside pressure and, and break one of those resistance points. You look at the chart here, you know, this was the descending channel that broke to the upside right when the market decided to bounce, and it, it was a straight up move. Definitely, uh, you know, a little bit out of the out of the blue, so to speak, where guys I think probably started shorting it a little bit around here and didn't do so well. Then you just had a nice what two week consolidation almost. So at this point yesterday, closed near the highs. If you're short this thing, I would think that you would cover above 255, 256. So that's why it becomes an action area. And then if it clears it and closes above it, your next major level is 264. So I would say out of all the high beta names, Amazon is on the radar to make a new you know all time high first. Wow. And then on the other hand, Baidu showed some relative weakness yesterday with a loss of 1.2 percent. What level does it need to hold to keep the bulls interested? This is one of the laggard trades. This is one that, you know, you have to be very careful with. It bounced with the market, maybe because the Chinese market started acting better. Um, at this point, you know, there is some commitment off the lows. I would just treat it as a trade and, and know your risk. If you go here um, and see the move from this little red dog reversal bottom, this also, look at that. This is a red dog reversal, guys. You know, look at the big move you've seen from 130 all the way down. And then, you know, recently from above 100 down to here, made a new low. This pivot here was 87.96. The low was 86-ish um, or 85.96. Here's your buy. And then it never violated. And from here, you had a nice move up to old resistance. So I would say at this point, if it could hold above this 94 area and hold higher, this will be on traders' radars to make another additional cash flow move above this, uh, what, 98.86 for then a move to the moving average, which comes in right around 102. I'm sorry for the yellow lines. I need to change it, but hopefully you can see it out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, time for some quick hits here. GLD has fallen below some key moving averages. What level does it need to hold to meet, to avoid meeting aggressive sellers? Okay, it's trying so hard, and I think gold bugs are scratching their head. They're like, "Why is gold so out of play?" Because I think inflation just has, hasn't, you know, shown its face. You know, but with the move that it looks like the euro is having to the upside and the dollar potential weakness, you would think the metals would act better, and, and people are waiting for it. If you look at the support here, you know, it's at that, you know, threshold where it's bent but not broken, and it's trying to hold this support. You know, I think it's up a little bit today. It's got a gap to fill right here into this. Um, area what number is this this gap would be filled around 165.36 but you know i guess you could say it's putting in a, a large uh, symmetrical triangle for it to really get underway potentially in 2013 it's going to have to clear 168 to 170 to get in motion as of right now you know i think um, part of the the, the i guess I, I has to hold above 162 to 164 to even be in the game for that type of move for me i'm avoiding it there's a lot of other cleaner moving situations out there 
And Facebook saw some downside follow through from Friday's sell off, but the damage was contained. So what now? What now? I think it just needs time. You know, it had a really nice move from that 22, 23 ish area when it broke above 24, went as high as 28, 88. You know, and then these things take times to consolidate. That was a big move. Uh, I was hoping it would get in gear quicker and it didn't, so I got stopped out of it. But it's gonna be on like my back burner as a B or C play. If it starts getting back above 28-ish, maybe I'll start looking at it again for a move through those highs. But as of right now, it's just an avoid. You look at the chart real quick and you will see, you know, this is when I got interested after that. This was the last lockup. It ignited higher, held higher. This was a nice calculated trade to help fill this gap. Got it filled, and now it's just like a sloppy mess for a while. So, you know, here's the range, and I just think it needs a little bit more time in this range. I'm not going to short it. I'm not going to go long it until I see some better action. And CRM, a name we've talked about a lot lately, has it had a gain of 1.2% yesterday, building on recent strength. So what levels are you watching now? At this time, I think if you long it, stay long it, trim it. You know, it's had a really nice move. Uh, last week when it was an off the charts right around, I believe, 160, that was the calculated buy entry. You look at the chart, you know, you see here, nice flag type pattern. So once it started to clear this area, that was the area for action. And then you even had another nice move, another nice bull flag type closed above it. So at this point, it's been a healthy gain. Uh, I would trim some if you want to stay with some, be, you know, so be it. But at this point, look at this at, at highs. It shows you that you could be a stock picker. It's at historic highs right now. So congratulations to investors in this situation. But I would always hate to initiate a new position at historic highs. It's just something that I don't like to do. And LVS, speaking of highs, is still holding higher. It has reclaimed most of its key moving averages. Now it's approaching the 200 day. So will it have enough to break through that level? We shall see. And this one guys started talking about yesterday because it's in one of those channels. And you know how I love channels. That means you have a long consolidation. That means you know, shares are changing hands and they could, once it breaks above a certain area, have a clean move. And if you look here at LVS, you will see that you know, it's been in this channel now all the way since September. Here's your low end, here's your, your high end. You know, it, it tried to break above here, wasn't ready, gave you a little red dog reversal, and then came back all the way, not to the bottom end, but to a little bit below halfway. Since then, came back up, I would say the longer it stays above 45, 60, um, the greater the odds that it finally breaks above this 47 and gets back in motion. You know, I was, I've been playing MGM, I don't have any lately, but this also, just as a quick hit, I think MGM's acting well. If this starts to get above 1153, you know, this thing can go north of 12. Okay, so where is your focus heading into trading today? I just want to see, you know, how we hold in there today. We had a nice day yesterday. The Dow was up 100, so, you know, 100 points or so. I think the NASDAQ was, you know, helping, you know, or participating up almost 40. I'd like to see if Apple could actually stay in the game today, not gap up and be sold, but gap up and continue and close on the highs to get it away from the danger zone. You know, I said before, Google, Amazon look decent. Banks have had a nice move, so I'm not expecting too much out of them. But, you know, a little sideways consolidation would be good. And I'd like to see potentially just some other sectors join the mix. Uh, home builders woke up yesterday. Some of the industrials are doing okay. Retail has been a little sloppy. But all in all, there, there are things to do. I know it's the last trading week of the year, so everyone's trying to wind down. But I would, when the opportunity is there, take it. Uh, but just take it with a little less size. Don't put your year at risk. You know, don't try and play catch up in the next few days. But, you know, make some money. Go into the holidays with a, a, a very, you know, positive head. So this way you can go into 2013, you know, full steam ahead. And with that said, happy trading, everyone. Have a great day.